Hi guys, it's Deb Watson again. When I first started painting, I had a terrible time with green. Everyone would just tell me, just mix your own green. Like, that was easy. I really struggled to do a nice landscape. Do you struggle with greens too? Well, after a long time, I figured out the secret to painting great greens. And I'm gonna share them with you. It turns out it really isn't that hard if you understand the basics and avoid the pitfalls. Now, we all know green is yellow and blue, but which yellow? Which blue? And then what? Let's take a look at why green is a problem in the first place. The green colors that you're probably used to, like hookers and sap, and olive, they're, they're a mix of yellow and blue and a bunch of other colors. You really only have to mix two pigments. That makes it easy to get it right. Then you'd have a range from one to the other. But if you're trying to mix three colors or four colors or five colors, Plus, a tube of paint that says hooker's green could be anything at all. So, the things you see people do on the internet might not work for you, even though you're both using a tube that says hooker's green. The truth is, green doesn't have to be this hard. Let's make it simple for you, because simple works. It gives me and my students great results and that makes me happy. Let's start with yellow. I only use two yellows. Here's my first favorite yellow for mixing greens. It's a light, bright, mostly transparent yellow. This one is called lemon yellow, and it is pigment yellow number three. And here's Hansa Yellow Light, which is also pigment yellow number three. And here's Benzim, Benzim, sorry, I can't pronounce it, but it's pigment yellow 154, which is a little better pigment. I shop for yellows by the pigment number, not the name. Why? I like to know what I'm buying. Sometimes the paint companies will add opaque white if you use it, any colors you make are going to be chalky and muddy. Check the side of your paint tube for the tiny little letters that say PY and a number. If your paint tube also says PW, that means pigment white. If it was me, I would just throw it away. It's going to make everything muddy looking. And you guys out there who are feeling smug because you buy the big name brands, don't feel so safe. Even the big name paint companies add white occasionally. So always check your yellow pigments. My second yellow for mixing good landscape greens is a green gold or pigment yellow 129. Now, Core is a new brand of watercolor paint. I like it because it doesn't fade as it dries. I don't have to use as much paint and I like the colors. And it mixes with blues to make a very natural looking green. Green Gold or Pigment Yellow 129 is one color I'd recommend for anyone who paints a lot of landscapes or florals. Opaque yellows like Naples, Bismuth, cadmium, yellow ochre. They typically make duller, more opaque shades of green. I tend to avoid those except for cadmium lemon makes decent blends of green. Gold colors, oranges, and browns can be mixed with some blues to make more subdued or olive green colors. And these come in useful sometimes. Now that was yellow. Let's take a quick look at blue. Now I have a bunch of charts I made showing each of my blues 
plus the lemon, which is PY3, and each blue plus the green gold, PY129. You can see I have a lot of blues, and these are all single pigment blues. I'll post a list of the blues with a brief description under the video. No matter how many blues you have, if you do your own test sheet, it makes it easy to look through your mixes and pick the best colors to match what you want to paint. Phthalo blue is often used when making greens. That's because it's really strong, dark, and transparent. It isn't hard to make green with phthalo blue, it's hard not to make green. With lemon yellow, it makes a beautiful yellow green, but the darker green is kind of artificial looking. Here it is with green gold, and here it is with burnt sienna. Idanthrene blue is another clean dark blue, but it's not as overpowering as phthalo blue. I'd recommend this color also if you don't have it. Idanthrene makes nice greens and you can mix it with orange for great browns. Of course, cobalt and ultramarine blues make nice greens with lemon yellow. And the most beautiful spring green color I can make is using cobalt turquoise light and lemon yellow. So yes, blue plus yellow make green, and that's really all you have to know. Now all that leaves are actual green pigments. There aren't that many. Uh, the only green pigment I keep on my palette is actually a black. Perilin green, also known as Paleogen Black. It makes pretty believable landscape greens when you mix it with yellow. And a lot of people have trouble getting dark values. So it works really well in that way too. You can also mix the peril and green with one of your dark blues. So for a dark green, you have to use a dark blue or peril and green. Now, I recently tried phthalo turquoise. It's a mix of phthalo green and phthalo blue. I have a black that I like in my oil paints and it's made with turquoise and magenta. So I thought, why not try making it with watercolor and see what happens? Boy, was I surprised. And I think you will be too. Phthalo turquoise and magenta make blue. Isn't that weird? How does that happen? I'm still not sure. It's just one of the fun things that watercolors do. Interesting, isn't it? If you have any interesting mixes that you like, I hope you share them in the comments. I have found lots of great colors and combinations from online suggestions. So guys, that's mixing green in a nutshell. Just keep it simple and you can do it. I hope you like this and share the video with your artist friends because green shouldn't be that hard. Happy painting!